your Lord. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. Don't give up on
presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Said I feel the in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord. come to celebrate the master this morning. Hallelujah for he's worthy of our praise, of our honor, and our glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can feel him moving and lift your hands. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We need you to move, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your way, God, like never before, God. In this season, we need you to move. We need you to save. We need you to heal right now in the name of Jesus, God. We can't make it without you. So we need you to move, God. We need you to heal, God. We need your saving power, God. We need your healing power, God, right now in the name of Jesus. We don't know what to ask for, God. So we thank you for having those to make intercessions for us, God. Right now in the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you would come into this place. Go into the homes, go into the hospitals, go into the jobs, God. Touch, heal, move, save, deliver right now in the name of Jesus, God. Because we can't make it without you, God. And in this hour, God, in this time right now, we need your power like never before. We need your anointing like never before, God. We need you to move all over this place. We need you to move all over this country, God. We need you to move in this world right now, God. Because if you don't do it, it won't be done, God. So we're thanking you in advance for what you're going to do, God. Because we know you're going to do it, God. So we thank you right now. We thank you right now. We magnify you, God. Because there's none like you, God. So right now, God, even though it seems like the burden may be tough, God. Even though it seems like we might not be able to handle it, God. We thank you for bearing the burden for us, God. We thank you for bearing the burden for us, God. It might seem like a burden, but God, thank you for letting us know it's just pressure, God. And we can handle the pressure, God, because we know you have the burden, God. So we're going to lift you up. We're going to magnify your name. We're going to glorify you. We're going to praise you just like if it was our last chance, God, because you alone are worthy of all the glory and the honor. So we thank you right now. We lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The scripture this morning is gladness and worship. Psalms 122, 95, 1 through 3. Verse 6, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. sweet to trust in Jesus.
God bless you and welcome to Bethel Family Worship Center, our live stream service. I'm so happy that you joined us today. You know what? There's a lot of choices that are out there today, being that churches are closed all over the world. And so to have you to join with us is a privilege and a blessing. I want you to share this with other people. Join in right now. Come on in and sit down and spend some time with us because I believe that the word that I have for you today is going to be a powerful, powerful message of, of wisdom and knowledge and, and, and is going to help you this week, okay? So call a neighbor, call a friend. I want you to transform your living room or your bedroom, wherever you are, into a sanctuary. And in that sanctuary, I want you to hold a sacred place for God. Do not allow a lot of movements and a lot of distractions to go on because the word of the Lord this morning is important, all right? Father, I thank you today in the name of Jesus and I pray that every distraction every attempt of the enemy to block this message from going forth we come against him in the name of Jesus for you have given us binding power and we bind the devil and every distraction in the name of Jesus and we loose joy peace happiness healing and liberty right now in the name of Jesus give us discernment give us discernment Unplug our ears and open up our spiritual nostrils to give us a sense of discernment right now in the name of Jesus that we may be able to discern the time to which we're living in and be prepared to worship you throughout this season. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Lord, you've been good to me. Lord, you've been good to me. Ooh. Lord, you're good, better than good. Lord, you're good, better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you, owe you my life. I can't praise you enough, even if you've been so good. Say it to somebody. Lord, you've been mm, so good. Lord, you've been so good. You've been so good to me. Let's give the Lord a praise. Amen and amen. Now, I know you're not in the building in person, but you're in the building in picture. And we thank the Lord for those of you who have just joined in with us in spirit. The old folks would say, I I'm not there in person, but I'm there in spirit. And I sense the spirits of so many of you that are a part of the Bethel Family Worship Center and those of you that are joining us from around the world to enjoy our worship experience. The praise and worship was dynamic this morning, and I pray that the word of the Lord would uh, be exactly what I feel in my belly. In a few minutes, I'm going to deliver that word unto you. I'm excited to announce to you that the church mother, a mother in our church, uh, has reached another year. She's 95 years old. Help me to honor Mother Graham, 95 years old. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mother Graham. imagine living on the earth 95 years. I'm asking God to give me that same grace and that same anointing that I would live tonight. God, you're going to do it. He told me you're going to do it 95 years old. I hear the voice of the 95 years old and walking around like she's 50. She's got a pep in her step. Now, we're not there and we can't hug you and hold you, and, and, but we can send some cake to you and some balloons and some flour and some flowers and some money. Mother Graham, can you still use money? I think so. Happy birthday. We love you so much. 
enjoy this day. Enjoy this day. Tonight, there is going to be a special service right here in the cathedral. Can't wait to get back here tonight. Uh, preaching, singing, and worship. The praise team and the band is going to be here. We are celebrating Pentecost Sunday. There'll be no after service this afternoon, and there'll be no uh, conference call tonight at 7 o'clock because we'll be here in the sanctuary at the cathedral and believe in God for a mighty, mighty move of the Lord. So we want you to join in with us and tell everybody that you know that we are celebrating Pentecost, the, the celebration of the Holy Spirit in the earth. We're celebrating that tonight, 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 tonight. Now, I feel that the word that's on the inside of me is a powerful, powerful. You know what I feel, I hear? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. This morning I'm going to be ministering to you out of our false religion series, lesson number two. Really, lesson number three. I did the introduction and then, uh, on Tuesday night. I did uh, the white horse and false religion out of our false religion series. I'm going to be ministering to you this morning on from this topic: counterfeit imposter antichrist. Counterfeit imposter antichrist. Coming to you out of Revelations chapter number 6, verses 1 through 8. Now, anytime you go into Revelations chapter number 6, uh, verses 1 through 8, it is the story of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. And I believe that this message is relevant for the day and the time to which we live in. It was just last week when a few friends of mine in the industry asked the question, is coronavirus in the Bible? And we went through the word of the Lord and didn't find the word corona or covert 19, but we did find the word pestilence, which means respiratory sicknesses and all of the attributes of this virus is found in that word pestilence. There's nothing that happens in the earth that somehow or another doesn't find its meaning or revelation in the word of God. So we're not going to start with the four horsemen of the apocalypse in verse chapter number six because it doesn't start in chapter number six. It actually starts in chapter number five. In chapter number five, Revelations chapter number five, verse number one, he says, And I saw in his right hand of him who sat upon the throne, written thereon and on the back of it, seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, nor under the earth was able to open the book, nor even look thereon. And John said, I wept. <laughs> I wept because no man was found worthy to open or to read, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, stop crying. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst, of the throne was four beasts, and in the midst of them elders that stood, and the lamb that had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth in all of the earth. And he came and he took the book out of my right hand from him who sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the twenty and four elders fell down before the Lamb with their harps and golden vows that was filled with the prayers of the saints. They sung a new song and 
they sung a new song. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. They sung a new song, something that has never been sung before. Never been heard before. Asakataba. And they sung. And they sung a new song. I promise you, no matter what you're going through, God is going to give to you a new song. And they sang a new song. And he had opened the book to release the seals thereof. <sighs> now imagine with me for a few moments. You're taken into the spirit and when you get into the realm of the spirit, you see thrones, angels, elders, creatures that you can't explain. And I looked and I beheld as it was a beast standing on the four corners of the altar. And the beast which I saw was likened. He had one head with four faces, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, the face of a lion, and the face of a man. He had wings, six sets of wings that came out of his shoulders and draped down to his feet. And under the wings was the hands like the hands of a human man. He had straight feet and the heels of his feet was as the heels of a calf's foot. And there was eyes blinking all over the body. And he had one assignment. That's to worship God. And he worshiped him by saying, worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy. Who is, who was, and who shall forever be? A new song. A new song. A new song. He looked and behold, there was a sea of glass. Crystal and pure he looked again and a river ran through the city on one side there was the tree of life and on the other side of the river a tree of life so no one had to cross the river in order to tap into life and he saw it a new song a new song a new song a kamasa kataba rukobo shataba and all of this peace was in glory. And now God was ready to release issues in the earth to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be glory, dominion, majesty, power, wisdom, forever I, I, I said that today Bethel because I want you to see something in scripture in verse number 11 behold I heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beast and the elders and the numbers that I heard was 10,000 times 10,000 10,000 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings and every creature which was in heaven and on the earth and under the earth even as much was in the sea and under the sea I heard him say blessings honor glory power be unto him who sitteth upon the throne the lamb forever and ever for the beast said amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him forever a new song a new song a new song verse number 12 says this in revelations chapter number Five, it says this and they crowd with a loud voice saying 
worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. What? Worthy Maru is the lamb that was slain to receive. Had he not been slain, he would not have power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, blessings. And I say to everyone watching, the hell that you're going through right now is your slaying. And when your resurrection comes, you shall receive wisdom, riches, glory, power, majesty. Name a person. Name a person who has not gone through a struggle but has received an inheritance and I'll show you the essence of arrogance. But show me a person who's gone through hell in order to maintain that which they have. They have regard and respect and appreciate it. He said in verse number 12, and he cried with a loud voice saying, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and power. And I know some of you never saw that in scripture, but it's right there. You're going through what you're going through in order to get what God has in store for you. After this storm is over, after this struggle comes to an end, after the tension lifts, a new song, a new song, and they sang a new song. Revelation chapter number 6, verses 1 through 8. And it reads like this. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the voice of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, a white horse. Put up the white horse, a white horse. And I saw and beheld a white horse. Read. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now I want to talk to you real briefly about this because this scripture deals with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And some of you might be a little agitated about how I'm going to approach this today, but I believe that fast uh, portions of the four horsemen of the apocalypse has already been fulfilled, especially when you understand the symbols and what they actually mean. The white horse is religion, the red horse is communism, the black horse is economy, the pale horse is disease and sickness, and everyone understands what a pandemic is now the world over. And so we have glimpses and foreshadowings of things that are in the word of the Lord. So I want you to take a look at these four horsemen. There's a white horse. There's a red horse. There's a black horse. There's a pale horse. But we're not going to talk about all of the four horses of the apocalypse today. We're just going to talk about one, and that is the white horse. We're going to talk about the white horse. The scripture says, and when the seal was opened up, uh, a white horse went forth riding, and the white horse that rode, a bow was given unto him. A bow. A bow represents authority, so he came with the bow. Then the text says, and a crown was placed on his head. So he had authority but a crown was given to him. And this is the type of crown that they received in the ancient Greek days, in the Roman Greek days during that empire. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth to conquer and conquering. So with great wealth, he went forth. 
The Bible tells us a story about this spirit that is going to rise up in the last days. And I believe that this spirit is the red dragon, the red dragon. The Bible gives us a story about this red dragon that has seven heads and ten horns and crowns upon the horns. The Bible then gives us the depiction of this and then gives us the revelation of it out of the book of Revelation. He says the seven heads on the beast which you see are the seven mountains on which the whore sits. So there's only one city on the face of the earth that sits on seven mountains and it's Vatican City. Vatican City. If you had enough time to consider it, you could almost see the seven heads of the beast, how in architecture it, 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 it is laid out. Uh, the Vatican City. In this modern time, in this modern day, certainly there's not going to come a person riding a physical white horse. This was the ancient of days, and so we have to bring it up to our time and our day. So he enters in on a white horse. Look what he rides, a white horse. It's the Pope Mobile, a white horse, a white horse. He has a bow, he has the authority, and a crown is given unto him. He is the ruler over vast crowds of people as they join together in Vatican Square. He is the head of an apostate religion, a universal religion. Billions of people are connected to this religious organization which claims and boasts of having the very bones of St. Peter in buried in the basilica at Vatican City. And I believe his bones are literally there. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, glory be to God, uh, in this time and this day, when we're talking about the Antichrist, one would even mention or connect it to the Pope. But I want you to take a look at the crown of the Pope. The Pope has a crown. The crown is three crowns that comes together. Three separate crowns matched together, and it's the dome. He wears this when he sits in his authority as the vicar of Christ, when Christ houses himself on the inside of him. He wears his mitre when he's speaking for God, but when he's speaking as God, he wears this crown upon his head. Now, the Bible teaches us through these passages of Scripture that one is going to come, and when he shows up, he's going to wreak havoc in the earth. I want you to go to, with me to Revelation chapter number 5, verse number 12. Revelation chapter number 5, verse number 12. I might skip around a little bit, and it reads like this. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Now, I want to say that again. He was slain in order to authenticate his power, his riches, his wisdom, his honor, his authority. There comes a time when our children who have received of us stuff operates and functions in an arrogance because they never worked for it. But then you'll have a son or a daughter who put all diligence into it, cares about it, holds money right, regards it and respects it because she was slain into it. The Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verses 1 through 17, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 17, it reads like this. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by his gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So he's telling that amidst all of this pandemic, amidst all of this crisis, amidst of the economy collapsing, amidst of sicknesses, amidst of the Republicans fighting the Democrats and governors fighting mayors, amidst all of this, he says, do not be pulled into a battle or a conflict that has nothing to do with the end of the times. Read. Let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man deceive you by any means. Read. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away For first. For that day shall not come unless there is a great falling away. Read. And that man of sin be revealed. And the, the man of sin be revealed. 
the son of perdition. The son of perdition. Now, the question is, Bishop, who is the son of perdition? And has the son of perdition ever been on the face of the earth? The answer is yes. The, the second part of the question is yes. The first part of the question, the son of perdition was represented in a man by the name of Judas. The Bible declares that God had collect, uh, selected 12 disciples and one of them was a devil. When Judas went and betrayed Christ and then he hung himself, the Bible said his spirit went to the side of the pit, even the son of perdition. So the spirit that was in Judas is the spirit of the Antichrist who is going to show up on the face of the earth today. I said it before and I'm going to say it again, Terry, and I'm going to say it for you. Listen to me, not that you can't hear, because I know you can hear, but I'm going to say this for you. So we understand one another and we connect with each other very, very well. There is no anti-God spirit in the world. There's only an anti-Christ spirit. But what each believer must understand that when we listen to the word or read the word anti-Christ in English or anti in English means against, but in Greek, anti also means another, another. This is the reason why the Antichrist comes as if he is another God and proclaims and declares himself as God. We're having a problem right now. The things that we were taught out of the word of the Lord is severely being challenged as we are merging religions together. We are celebrating Krishlam, the celebration of Christians and Islam together. Folks are walking around with true religion shirts on. True religion is the religion of Buddha. Buddha, a god. Each, each god is fighting for their position in the universe. And the Antichrist, the other, the other choice will show up in that hour and in that day and fool all of the gods and take a position. And when he in enters into that specific position, he will cause many of us who know God to fall out of fellowship with God. Read the scripture. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is God. I feel this thing rising up on me now. Here we go. Uh-huh. Or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of so God. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. Here we go. Showing himself that he is God. And showing himself that he is God. Watch this here. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? I told all of the members of Bethel Family Worship Center down through the years, my 23 years of pastoring this church, as we have gone over scriptures and things like this. In all of my days, I never dreamt or saw that I would be living in a time where the entire nation is shut down. I never thought that an unseen little virus could shut an entire nation down. Morrow, when we first had this discussion, there was only 300 cases. That was eight weeks ago. There's a million cases in America right now. Uh, they told us when this thing first started that if you were black, you couldn't get it. And if you were uh, ages 60 and above or, 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 or five and under, then you could catch it. They said it was a cold virus and it could only be uh, happen in places where it was cold. Well, now Brazil is the leading country in the world. They dug 10,000 graves today in Brazil. 100,000 graves have been uh, dug in one week to handle the deaths that are transpiring in Brazil. And Brazil's weather is 95 degrees which means that in the United States of America, we might not even experience a slope. And we're opening up schools. We're opening up churches. We're opening up restaurants. We can't sit still long enough to weather a storm that is called death. The death angel is in the land. And the spirit of deception is everywhere. And what is unfortunate about it, preachers, preachers of the gospel are more concerned about money than they are about the souls of their congregation. This is the reason why they want to open up. Many of them want to open up because the funds are not there. The money is not there. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Absolutely true. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Absolutely true. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall. All that is true. But there's another scripture. And it says, 
thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Read the scripture. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. For the mystery of iniquity, that means that the man of sin or the Antichrist or the spirit of the Antichrist is already here in operation. Watch this here. Only he who now letteth. Only he who now letteth. Will let. Will let. That means that the only reason why we're not seeing the fullness of the Antichrist is because the Holy Ghost is here. Amen. Move the Holy Ghost and that booger will show his face. There are those of you that walk in the anointing of God and you never see demonic manifestations because the devil would never show his face in front of you because he recognizes that you walk with an authority and with a power that will cast him out. There's an authority that the believer is walking in that Satan is trying to snatch from us. Amen. Read the word. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Until he be taken out of the way. Overseer King, am I still doing good? Amen. Here we go now. Uh -huh. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Uh huh. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. My God. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. My God. Uh huh. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Mm -hmm. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they we might We just be saved. got finished experiencing down through the years over the past 20 years is preachers functioning under prophetic apostolic uh, miracles, signs, and wonders and are as false as false can be. But the church have not been able to pinpoint it. Why? Because there is a lukewarmness that is running through the veins of the children of God. And because of it, because of this lukewarm spirit, we can't detect that which is totally God or not. And many of us are seeking something to fit the lifestyle that we have to make us feel comfortable. And so preachers who are preaching the true word of God are an offense to those who refuse to live right. And they call us crazy when righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Read the word of God. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. So now we're seeing people who we think is anointed of God, who is anointed of the devil, and God is behind the person who receives it because God sent them strong delusions. We're in a season of counterfeits, imposters, and antichrists. And I mean another. You go into the restaurant and a uh, an Italian restaurant, they serve pasta. You like pasta? You like pasta? What kind of pasta you like? You like the penny pasta. You like pasta, uh, uh, Reese? What kind of pasta you like? You, you, he likes anti-pasta. He likes anti-pasta. That was great. I, I appreciate you for saying that. Anti-pasta is another choice. It's not against the pasta but it's something that is prepared like pasta with no pasta in it. So we have uh, what they call that uh, 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 linguine spaghetti. And it's prepared just like spaghetti. It's string just like it. And the sauce makes it taste like it, but it's not it. We're living in a time and a day where the antis are now ruling something that is another choice, another opportunity, an alternative. And that's where the enemy begins to work and fight with us. Read the word of God. God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. 
But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel. Whereunto he's called you by our gospel. To the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. To the revealing of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm saved and I know that I'm saved. Watch this here. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Stand fast. And hold the traditions which and you have been taught. And hold what we have been taught. Whether by word uh -huh. or our epistle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether rather the preacher told it to you or you read it in the Bible. Hold to it. Watch this here. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, uh -huh. comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Now, I want you to understand this as I begin to close this message on this morning. We're living in a time and a day of mass counterfeits. Counterfeit churches. Counterfeit. Counterfeits. Counterfeits. The Bible says the time is going to come where we not be able to differentiate what is of God and what is not. Our churches have moved into a position where everybody claps hands now. Everybody has a choir now. Everybody has a praise team now. You go to a Lutheran church, they got a praise team. You don't know the difference between holiness or Pentecostalism. Everybody has conformed into a church-like uh, pattern. Uh, they, they want excitement. The millennials are really, really a blessed crowd. Because the millennials ain't putting up with just anything. The millennials ask the question, why? And then it greatly distresses us and, 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 and makes us feel sort of kind of crazy. But the millennials are forcing me to get deep into the word of God. See, Junior, you make me go deep into the word of God. See, they was raised up in this stuff. You know, Isaiah, raised, raised up in this, in, 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 in this stuff. And, 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 and now, it doesn't seem like what we said it was. So they ask the question. And out of the question that they ask, the answer many times boggles the mind of the person who actually taught that to them. That it didn't really exist in the word of God in the beginning. And yet we held it to be some sort of truth. And so now the entire Bible is on trial because if they lie to me about this, then what about this? If wearing of pants was a sin then, and we find out that it's not now, what else is not now? We've preached a counterfeit message to accommodate an a, 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 a false gospel that sets us up for false leaders to tell us anything. Thanks be to God that gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Go to 2 Timothy chapter number 2. So 2 Timothy chapter number 4, I'm sorry. 2 Timothy chapter number 4, verses number 3 through 8. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. For the time will come when they not endure sound doctrines. I've been there one time in my life. Unfortunately, but true, all the mistakes that I've made and the troubles that I've had in the past, I made those mistakes while preaching. I've made my mistakes while preaching. I've been to jail while a preacher. I've, been, I, I, I've, 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 I've had babies out of wedlock while preaching. I've been on drugs while preaching. You can turn the video off right now if you don't want to hear it because the truth is the truth. But the hand of God stayed on my head. And because I was not a person who was running after fables and false doctrines, I'm able to stand in this pulpit today and decree and declare that the God that was 
is the God that is and the God that shall forever be in my life personally. Oh, man, that was a great place for amen. Watch this here. He says, for the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrines. Uh-huh. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves. Uh-huh. Teachers having itching ears. In other words, they are looking for the type of lessons and the type of churches that allows them to embrace and live the type of lifestyle that they want according to some scriptures that have been misplaced. Read. For they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Turn away their ears from the truth. Uh -huh. And they shall be turned unto fables. And now they're turned to fables. Watch this. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. You know, if the church was full today, and I was going to preach this text, that's where I would drop it. Moments away from dropping the mic right there. For I am now ready to be offered. I am now ready to be offered. I fought a good fight. I, 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 I kept the faith. Uh, there's a crown that is laid up for me. In, 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 in this particular passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul is warning the children of God that he's going away and he'll see them on the other side of glory. And the glory that the Apostle Paul is telling the children of God about is he knew a man some time ago, whether he was in the body, or, oh, I felt my preach come up, or out of the body. He said, I can't tell, but such a one was caught up into the third heavens and saw things that was not lawful for him to utter. It wouldn't mean that he would break the law if he would say it. What he was saying is there was no words on earth that could explain what he saw. So the glory that God is holding back from us is unexplainable if we get it or see it. Yeah. Who goes through hell and comes out, glory be to God, still giving God praise for putting him through? Nobody buys a car so that the car ends up uh, being uh, snatched away by the repo man. Nobody buys a house so that the house ends up in foreclosure. Who has children so that the children can be rewarded to the state? No one gets married so that your marriage ends up in divorce. But this coronavirus, glory be to God, has put us in a predicament where we're faced with all of these different types of elements. And in the midst of it, God is saying, go in. Shut the door. Go into seclusion. Wait a little while, I'm going to show forth my hand. Ah, and when I show forth my hand, folks are going to know that I dwell on the inside of you. The George Bloomer that I'm becoming out of the past 10 weeks, I never met him before. I don't know that guy before. I, I, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. But I'm so glad I had the opportunity to meet him. And after I met him, I found out the imposter in me. I, find, I found out my anti-situations. I found out my counterfeits. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I found out those things about me, and I've decided that if God is going to do a great work, the work is not going to start in you. The work is going to start in me. <laughs> Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Let me stop this thing and close, bring, bring this thing to a close. The man of sin is about to be revealed. We're going to see, glory be to God, a carnage like we've never saw it before. We're going to see a downpour of demonic manifestations like never before. We're beginning to see it. Nations shall rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. That word nations means ethnos. Ethnos, it means, glory be to God, races. Uh, we're, all, we're all in peril right now. Most of us are very, very upset while I'm preaching this message. For there's a video that is going across the country that is viral with a police officer kneeling on the neck of a black man with his hands in his pocket like that's the best place he could rest. He's screaming out of his agony, can't breathe. My chest is hurting. My stomach is hurting. They gonna kill me. And then his death cry was, Mama! When you call for your mama and you're in your 50s and you calling for your mama, that's death 
trying and pulling, y'all in here, that's pulling at you. Uh, we got a woman, glory be to God, in, in, in Central Park. Uh, uh, a bird watcher uh, is afraid of a dog that is not on a leash. And he says to her, hey, uh, tie your dog up. She says, Negro, get out my face uh, for I call the cops on you. And she's calling the cops. And while he's videotaping her, she's using her white privilege. Can I preach here today? Using her white privilege, glory be to God, to get the police into the park. When the police gets into the park, glory be to God, and they find that she's lying, they don't deal with her because she had dealt with this bad thing against the man, the black man. They deal with her because they don't like how she was holding the dog. They said that the dog was choking. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. So the life of a dog is more than the life of a black man who never resisted without any gun, without any knife. Oh, I feel like preaching it here today. Without... Uh, counterfeits. We live in an apostate state. Uh, a lady is at home sleeping. Uh, someone calls 911 and as they run into the building to go into the house, they break into the wrong house. She's laying in the bed and they shoot her in her sleep. These are perilous times for the Bible declares that in the last days some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from me. The Bible said, this know also that in the last days perilous times will come, for men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God, heady, high-minded, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unruly, unthankful, without natural affection, truth breakers. You can't trust nobody to keep a secret for you in this time and day. The Bible says, let take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. When was the last time that you heard a message on the Antichrist? When was the last time that you heard a message on the devil? When was the last time you heard a message about hell? When was the last time you heard a message about turning? When was the last time you heard a message about sanctification? When was the last time you heard a message about being filled with the Holy Ghost? When was the last time? We now live in a time and a day where the counterfeit fits, fits. And because of the glory and the splendor, we miss God. I want to share this with you as we close. Daniel's chapter number 8, verses 23 through 27. 23 through 27. And it reads like this. And in the latter time of their kingdom... When the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and... A king of fierce countenance. He cut up a shut up. A fierce countenance will appear. Uh-huh. And understanding dark sentences shall stand up. He'll understand dark sentences will stand up. We have preachers now, Zo, who used to preach... But they no longer preach anymore. They've become shamans, warlocks. Even in clerk international assemblies, we've had preachers who were bishops. But if you put their name in and go online right now, they're shamans, warlocks, using the gift of the spirit world to their own gain. Counterfeits. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Counterfeits calling themselves prophets when they're prognosticators, warlocks, necromancers, playing with the occult. I'm not talking about the little, the weak ones that use Facebook. I'm talking about those, glory be to God, that deals with Ouija boards and casting of spells. Counterfeit season is here now. And it's time, time for us, glory be to God, to see will the true church stand up. Those who have relationship with God ain't up for this foolishness. I don't care how big it is and how pretty it looks and how much the light shows cost and how much the production is. There's a group of us that know who our God is. And because of it, no matter how pretty we look, something on the inside says, uh-uh-uh, that ain't right. Something is not right about this. The Bible says this, if you can bear with me. The Bible says that the Antichrist shows up on a white horse. I'm not saying that the Pope is the Antichrist. You don't have to write me. You don't have to put something in a comment at the bottom of this. 
I'm not saying that the Pope is the Antichrist. In fact, I believe that Pope Francis is far from that. If anything, I believe that Pope Francis had an experience with Jesus himself. That's not what I'm talking about. But the Bible tells us that out of that system will rise something that is evil and dark with a fierce countenance. And as he rises up out of it, he'll cry peace as a lamb, but produce war as a dragon. He looks like a lamb, but he's a dragon. He'll cry peace, peace, peace. And after a while, sudden destruction. Uh, put up for me, if you would, back there, the white horse with the Pope. The Pope that comes in, the Pope that comes in on the white horse. The Pope on the white horse. There you go. That's him. That's him. The religions of the world are about to collapse as they continue to have this mergence of religions all coming together. The Bible says that he came with a bow. That's authority. And he was given a crown. That is consecration. He was consecrated. They made him great. And his banner tells us the story. If you see the flag that flies over the head of the Pope, look at the top of it. It's the crown. And at the bottom of it, it's the bow. And the keys represents the authority. Out of this city will rise up religions that will cause us to ask ourselves the question, do we serve God or do we seek another? The spirit of Antichrist rested overseer king on John the Baptist one afternoon when he began to fear death and said, go get Jesus to have Jesus to deliver me out of this prison. Jesus said to John, you put yourself in this predicament. I'm not coming. John said, you go and tell them. You go and tell Jesus. Is he the one or should we seek another? It is the spirit of Antichrist. I pray for you this morning. Every one of you this morning, I pray that you hear the voice of God in this message. I pray that you stop pushing and forcing your children into something that they don't want to go. But that you live a certain way in front of them. I, I, I pray. I pray. I read an article. I read an article about this respiratory situation. And it says, people who smoke have an 83% chance of catching it, no matter what age you are. Because it's a respiratory virus and disease. I said, what if you smoke? You're not going to hell for smoking a cigarette. But you could die soon. In the article, it stated how that when the article was released, cigarette sales dropped by 23%. We couldn't get cigarettes to drop for nothing, but coronavirus, 23%. Now understand this, a pack of cigarettes Maybe five or six dollars. I don't know how much it is. Five, six dollars, six dollars a pack. Eighty-three million Americans buying three packs a day. Six times eighty-three million. Twenty percent of that. Do you, do, 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 do you understand that if Corona stays around a little bit longer, it will wipe out the nicotine business. Counterfeits. Counterfeits. Bethel, I can't wait till we all get back together in fellowship. I pray that you stay focused. I pray that you keep your mind together. And I pray that you don't find yourself sitting in nobody else's church 
as long as your spirit is assigned to my voice. I pray that you hear the message that I'm preaching and not get caught up in counterfeits, that you get your messages online, that you, you, that you see me on our Zoom calls. I love you. We can sit there, talk for hours. We can have ice cream and eat popcorn. Smoke cigarettes if you would. The devil is a lie. <laughs> we can come together. God has blessed this church. He has blessed this house. He has blessed this people. He's forgiven us of our sins. He's favored us and given us another chance and a greater opportunity to minister to the world. I'm preaching to more people now, not being in this building, than I ever in all the years that I pastored. The offerings are not down. The church is staying faithful. And souls are getting saved every day. Not only are souls getting saved, people are joining my church, joining Bethel, asking how can they join Bethel, and we're not even in the building. We haven't been in this building in 10 weeks. People are getting filled with the Holy Ghost because they know the difference between an imposter, a counterfeit, another. So I pray for you today yeah, that you would receive wisdom, majesty, power, riches because of the hell that you went through and that you come out on top victorious because he is your God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that every person that is watching today would be pricked in their hearts, bend their knees, cry out to you, and turn things around. That this would be a time and a season that you would fix it for all of us. And we give your name praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give him praise. someone that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior and you heard the message today and intertwined in the message you see that we live in a society right now where God is shaking the earth and we're coming together a boy is jogging down the street and a few folks on a pickup truck decides they're going to shoot a dog in the street they go on safari we, we, we need Jesus we need Jesus Today, or last week, I spent some time with my Caucasian pastors and Korean pastors and Latino pastors, and they're outraged too. This is the first time that I've seen us beginning to make the attempt to come together. There is protesting going on in the streets. The police officers have turned cannons and gas bombs on the crowds, but this time, 40 to 55 percent of the people that are marching are of other nations and other nationalities. We're getting to a place where enough is enough. And I'm asking you today, as it is in the world, is it that same way in your life? Is enough enough for you? And if it is, say goodbye to your old life and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. He wants to come into your life and save you. And when we get back, I want to see you and be able to at least elbow bump you and tell you welcome to the royal family. You can't walk down the aisles, but you can walk to the television. You can walk to your smartphone and receive Jesus right now as your Lord and your Savior. We we offer Christ to you, oh my brother. 
I thank you right now when you can receive Jesus as Lord and Savior by lifting up your hands and saying, Lord, I'm a sinner in need of your saving grace. I ask you to come into my life and forgive me of my sins and wash me in your blood. Give me to know that I have life eternal. I want to be saved and I want to see you in peace. No counterfeit, no imposter, no anti in my life. I want Jesus. If you prayed that prayer and you believe in your heart, they shut up. You shall be saved. You shall be saved. You can be saved today. The Lord has made a way. Give your He'll forgive all your sins. Just come, just come to him. Come to him. Oh, Lord, eh? Come to him. Come to him. Come to him. Oh, Lord, come to him. For your word teaches, for we know that God heareth not a sinner's prayer, but if any man be a worshiper of him, ah, and a doer of his will, him he will hear. I pray that you come on in, that you come on in, that you come on in, weary, wounded, and sad. You'll find for you a resting place, and you shall be glad. Somebody getting saved right now. I sense it in my spirit. Nah, Saka. I sense it in my spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. To cry. Welcome to the royal family. Welcome to Bethel Family Worship Center. Thank you for making the greatest choice and the greatest decision that you can make in your life, and that's to give your life to Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, I look forward to seeing you tonight. Tonight, tonight is going to be a powerful, powerful night. So I want to get out of here so we can get back and uh, worship tonight. No after service. It's time for you to sow your offerings, your seed, your offerings. And you've been faithful in it. Let me take a moment and really, really bless you for your faithfulness at Bethel Family Worship Center. 
Without your faithful support, we cannot make it. It would have not been possible. But look what you've done. You said, I love that man of God. I'm sticking with him. I'm staying in. You did it. And God is going to do great things. Well, the summer is upon us, and we don't want any summer blues. We don't know when we're going to be able to come back into this room. I'm not coming back in with all of you until God says so. But until then, I thank you for remaining faithful. There are four ways that you can sow your seed. Four ways that you can sow your seed. Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC 515. Or you can mail it to Bethel Family Worship Center, 515 Dow Street, uh, 2 Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Leave it up there for a few moments. It's time for you to sow your seed. Time for you to get your seed in the ground, in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. Text to give. Text 844-888-9183. 91, BethelFamily.org. That's online. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC 515. Uh, uh, or you can mail it in. There's some folks that say, I don't trust none of these engines. I don't trust, they, 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 they believe in the turtle mail. And yes, sir, and so they make sure that they put it in through the mail, and we understand that, and so, so that seed. Those of you that understand the Taroma, you understand the scripture that says that you give your priests a portion of your dough that he may consume it, and the glory of the Lord may never leave your house. Uh, cash app, dollar sign, big guy bloomer, Zell bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me. GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844 889 1559. 1559. Are you ready? Continue to sow your seed. Let's do that one more time. Cash app, dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You're sowing your seed right now, and there is not going to be any deficit in your life. No deficits in your life. No deficits in your life. There'll be no after service today because we'll be here in the cathedral on uh, tonight. Uh, Pentecost Sunday is upon us, and I want you to be a part of this great fellowship. Now, I believe that the preachers that's going to be with us, the preachers that are going to be with us, I think it's uh, Cecil Bridge, Bridgeport is going to be um, with us, and I think uh, Tasha Lewis is going to be with us, and uh, Shirley Brown is going to be with us, and Overseer King is going to be with us, and Overseer Morrow is going to be with us, and Overseer Graham is going to be with us, along with Bishop and the praise team and the band, and we're going to be praying and believing God for just some miraculous stuff. Okay, four ways that you can sow your seed. Text Bethel to 844-888. Uh, 9183 online giving uh, uh, your Bethelfamily.org uh, cash app uh, uh, I keep on saying uh, 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 cash app <laughs> uh, dollar sign BFWC 515 uh, 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 or you can put it in the mail you can put it in the mail there are four ways that you can sow your Taroma Cash app, dollar sign, big guy Bloomer, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal, PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844 889 1559. You're sowing your seed. You're sowing your seed. You're sowing your seed. Was that an okay message today? Was it an okay message? Was it an okay message? Thank you, thank you. I want you to join us on our Bible study, Bible study, because we're going to be tackling some of these, these topics that they're going to be tackling. I want to thank God for the media team. If you can give them a hand clap, that is really, really, that has really, really kept the whole church together. I want to thank God, glory be to God, for our finance team, all of our deacons and trustees. 
uh, uh, Sproul and his team, uh, Darren and their team, keeping things together. I want to thank God for the band. You guys have been outstanding in the name of Jesus. All right. I want to thank God for Elder Ronnie King and all of his team that keep this thing running and going. The doors of the church is closed. Uh, the sound people, Victor, thank you so much. You're doing a great, great job. Boy, if I had a camera, I would put it on him. I'd say, Victor, you're doing a great job. He's like, what is wrong with that guy? What is wrong with that? We're going we're gonna to take him through a class on deliverance. Amen. In the name of Jesus, get him free. In Jesus' name, amen. He don't smile at nothing. Come on. Can he get a little smile? Praise God. Um, I know how to make you smile. Yeah, I know how to make you smile. Shoot them new lemon Krispy Kreme donuts. Devil is a lie. All right, what you laughing for? <laughs> four ways that you can sow your seed. Four ways that you can sow your seed. Four ways you can sow your seed. Text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Cash app, dollar sign, BFWC 515. Or you can just put it in the mail. 515 Dow Street. Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Last time I'm putting this up today, last time I'm putting this up today. So write it down, write it down, get it. Take your phone, take a screenshot of it, uh-huh, and sow your seed. Now, those of you who would be in the sanctuary and you would sow a sacrificial seed of $100, I'm asking you to do what you would do if you were in the building. Everything that we do is still going on we're just not physically in the building, and we thank you for that. All right, four ways that you can sow your taroma. Four ways you can sow your taroma. This last time I'm putting it up, take a snapshot of it. Cash app, dollar sign, big guy bloomer, Zell bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give. Text bloomer to 844-889-1559. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Terry, how was that message today? When is the next shipment of food coming in? Tomorrow. Tomorrow about this time, things are going to change. It's, yeah. Woo! Uh-huh. Oh, Lord, hey. Things are going to change. Tomorrow. About this time, oh Lord, hey, things are going to change. Things are going to change. Tomorrow about this time, oh, things are going to change. Things are going to change. Things are going to change. Things are gonna change, oh Lord, eh? Things are gonna change. Things are gonna change. Things are gonna change. Yeah, yeah. Things are gonna change. Oh yeah, definitely. Things are gonna change, change. If you. If you think it, then you can have it. Woo! If you speak it, God will establish it. Oh, yeah. If you think it, then you can have it. Woo! If you speak it, things are going to change. Things are going to change. Things are gonna change, 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 change. Woo! Things are gonna change. Yeah. Yeah. 
things are gonna change. Yeah, Lord, things are gonna change. They can't stay the same. Things are gonna change. Oh, Lord, things are gonna change. Gonna change. I pray. I pray for George Floyd's family. I pray for all of those who were just struck by the spirit of death and murder. I pray that justice will be done in this hour. I pray, God, that you would touch the heart of our president to speak out against this. To speak out against this. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That guy's got my name saying, George. But for the grace of God, there goes I. But I pray that things change, things change, things change. Amen. All right, so Bethel, get ready. I'll see you tonight. I'll see you tonight. I'm believing God for great, great things. And this week is going to be a phenomenal week. And we're just going to trust God in Jesus' name. Amen. Now remember, no matter what you go through, no matter what you deal with, no matter what you are confronted with, God won't put no more on you than you can bear. He knows how much you can bear. Pray for me. I'm Bishop George Bloomer, pastor of the Bethel Family Worship Center Church. I love you, and I'll see you tonight in our service. God bless you.